I shouldn't read it. If, if Acts is a book of transition, take it out of your Bible and don't ever preach it again. But tonight I know that the book of Acts is not a book of transition. It's just a part of the Word of God. Amen. And if it's a part of the Word of God, it's something we've got to talk about. Right? Amen. It's something important. So tonight, I just want you to, to listen to what I have to say. And I'm going to use all the scriptures I can find in the book of Acts to talk about them being filled and speaking in other tongues. And I want you to make up your own mind what you believe about it. I can tell you this. You don't have to speak in tongues to go to heaven. You don't have to speak in tongues to be saved. If you don't speak in tongues, it doesn't mean that you're any less than anybody else. But I can tell you, it is a gift that God gave to bless the church and to bless your life. And if you will open up your ears and listen, I believe it can help you. But you've got to have open ears. So tonight, I'm going to start out in saying... In Mark chapter 16, verse 15 through 18, and I got a lot of scripture. I think when you're trying to lay a, a foundation, you need to layer it with scripture so that people know it's not you talking about this. It's the word of God. It says in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, Jesus said unto them, this is after he resurrected, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Raise your hand if when you got saved, you learned how to speak French. Raise your hand if when you got saved, you learned how to speak German. I don't know about you, but my salvation wasn't that epic. I didn't learn to speak a, another language with other people that way. So I know that when he says they shall speak with new tongues, he's not saying, I'm going to teach you how to speak a foreign language so you can talk in Spanish to someone in Latin America. That's not what he's talking about. They shall speak in new tongues or new languages is what the Bible says. So let me give you another point of reference here. Being filled with the Spirit and speaking in other tongues is not something that is uniformly joined with being saved in itself. In John chapter 20, verse 22 and 23, and I'm just going to quote it. Do you remember in John where Jesus was talking to his disciples and it says he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit? If he breathed on them and said that, why did he say don't you all do any ministry until you go wait for the promise of the Spirit. What do you mean, Jesus? They already got it. What do you mean? There's different events that go on. You see, when Jesus breathed on them, he said, Whoever sins that you forgive shall be forgiven, and whoever sins you remit shall be remitted. That's the next words after it says Jesus breathed on them to receive the Holy Spirit. He's saying that I have breathed on you the Holy Spirit. You are saved. I've given you my gospel. Whoever accepts this gospel, sin shall be forgiven. Whoever rejects this gospel, their sins will be retained. They'll still be living in their sins. But he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the person who gives you the ability to be saved. Amen. He's the one who gives you the, the enlightenment to say, I need a Savior. I'm lost. I need help. And the Holy Spirit draws you to say, I need Jesus to save me. So that was the first thing that he did in John. But he said, y'all got to wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. So the first occurrence of being filled was accompanied by the, the disciples speaking in other tongues, which were the languages of those around them. I'm going to give you a number two. In Acts chapter 10, verse 34 through 46, has anybody heard of Cornelius? Cornelius was a Gentile. He was a man in Caesarea, a centuron of the band called the Italian Band. It said he was a devout man and one that feared God with all of his house. And he gave much alms to people and he prayed to God always. So God gave Cornelius a, a vision to say, I'm just going to read it. He saw in a vision evidently in verse 3, chapter 10, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Your prayers and your alms are come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa to call for one Simon, whose name surname is Peter. 
So God gave Cornelius a vision to say, I need Peter to come to you. You need to send men to go get the apostle Peter to come to your house. So Peter ends up coming to Cornelius' house. And I'll pick up in verse 34. Peter gets there and it says he opened his mouth and said of the truth, I, re I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Is anybody glad of that? Amen. God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't say one person's better than another. He likes everybody. He wants everybody to know him intimately and deeply. And it says in verse 35, But in every nation, he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say you know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began from Galilee after the baptism of John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, or ghost, with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, God and God was with him. Verse 39, And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead, to give to him, give all the prophets witness that through his name, Whoever believes in him shall receive remission of sins. And listen to this. Cornelius heard these words. He said, oh my goodness, forgiveness of sins. Verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Cornelius got saved. He heard that Jesus can forgive your sins. He received that. And then he got filled with the Holy Spirit. And it said that he spoke with tongues. There's your second scripture about speaking in tongues or languages. Now the Bible does not say that he spoke in a foreign language. It just said he spoke with tongues and magnified God. So, my third instance, and you don't have to turn here, I'll just try to read these quickly to give you some points of reference. Acts chapter 19, verse 1 through 6. And this really stuck out to me when I first read it. It says in Acts chapter 19, verse 1, and when it came to pass, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. That's the baptism of repentance. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. There's three instances we see of speaking in tongues. So I'm going to give you another example in Acts chapter 19, 17, and 18. And I'm not going to turn there. I'm just going to tell you what happened for time's sake. So does everybody remember... That Paul got struck blind on the road to Damascus by the Lord. And then he went in and stayed in this house. And God sent a man named Ananias to come lay, on, lay hands on him. That he may receive his sight and receive the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says. Ananias came and laid his hands on Paul. He received his sight. And he received the Holy Spirit. Now if you read that account, there is nothing that mentions that Paul speaks in tongues at that moment. There's no, nothing in the account that says that. But if you read in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, the Apostle Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. Why would he say, I speak more languages and dialects than any of you? 
If you read at, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and I'm going to go over it next Wednesday, but you read the context, it has no context in relation to saying that Paul spoke in Spanish and, and Japanese and Korean. It has no context of that. But you'll have to read it for yourself, and I'm going to teach it on next Wednesday night. But the Apostle Paul said, I speak in tongues more than all of you. So there's another instance where Paul was filled with the Spirit, and he spoke in tongues. So my last instance, Acts chapter 8, verse 14 through 22. Y'all didn't know you were going to get in the Bible this much when we came to church tonight, did you? <laughs> Acts chapter 14 through 22. I need you all to see this for yourself. Because I believe when you're empowered by the scriptures, you will be able to make your own opinion about things. Amen. And when we see that these people were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in other tongues, I see that they, they accompanied each other in many instances. So it says in Acts chapter 8, verse 14 through 22. Now in verse 14 it says, Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. They heard Samaria receive the word of God, and then they sent Peter and John. Verse 15, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That means they asked Jesus to forgive them and save them, and they were baptized in his name. And it says in verse 17, then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And it says that when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. It doesn't say that they spoke in tongues right here. But how would Simon know that these people received the Holy Ghost if nothing had happened to them? If Paul had laid his hands, or if Peter or John had laid hands and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, or receive the Holy Ghost, and they did nothing, nothing occurred, Simon wouldn't have looked at that account and said, Oh man, I want to be able to lay hands on people and do that. They must have been doing something vocally that caused him to say, Wow, what are they doing? Right. I would venture to say they were probably speaking in tongues, speaking in other languages. So, there are five accounts there of speaking in tongues, languages. Five accounts. Five is the number of grace. So I know that tongues is a grace gift that God has given. But you may ask, who is speaking in tongues for? Is it only for Pentecostal people that are crazy, or is it for everybody? So Acts chapter 2, Peter, Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. And it says in Acts chapter 2, verse 36 through 38, he said, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this same Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts, and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men, brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins. Then he goes on to say, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. After you get saved, you can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 39 says, for the promise is to you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God will call. Peter says, this is for everybody, as many as the Lord our God will call. You might say, well, he said, then you'll receive the Holy Spirit. He doesn't say anything about speaking in tongues. Don't forget that the account of Acts chapter 2 started with the commotion of the disciples are speaking in other tongues. That's why the multitude came around. That's why Peter stepped out and said, men and brethren, I know exactly what this is. Let me tell you about it. And then he goes on at the end of that scripture to say, you can receive the Holy Ghost after you get saved by Jesus. And you can have it, and anybody who wants it can have it. It's for as many as our Lord God will call. Everybody can have it. So, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 39. You all can look this up for yourself. It says, forbid not to speak in tongues. 
That's what the Apostle Paul said by the anointing of the Holy Spirit to the church at Corinth. It says, forbid not to speak in tongues. And I'm going to give you one other scripture here before I go. And I really want you all to come back next week because I had to lay this foundation so that I could talk about 1 Corinthians chapter 14 in context to where we could understand what it's talking about. But I want to end with saying the Bible says in Jude chapter 20, or Jude verse 20, I should say, building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost. Your most holy faith is what the Bible says, praying in the Holy Spirit. Tongues is used to help you. It's used to build you. It's used to strengthen you. It's not something that God released and said, it's spooky. It's weird. It's something that God, I believe, wants to give people in the church so that he can communicate with them on a higher level. You see, I don't know how to pray for somebody in Africa that needs a touch from the Lord right now. But when I pray in the Holy Spirit, God knows what's going on with that person in Africa. And he can use me to pray for that person in Africa that's hurting me. Have you all noticed that when you go to try to pray, you're like, man, God, I can't think of what to say. Now, there's instances where I do know what to say, but there's others where, Lord, I really want to pray for my friend, but I have no idea what to say. It's just not coming to my mind. Those are moments where I believe, personally, that God has given us a gift of speaking in tongues that you can pray a prayer to God that will help somebody in need that you just don't have the words to pray in that moment. Amen. And we're going to talk about this next Wednesday. I hope you all will come back, but I had to lay a foundation. I'm running out of time tonight. So I just hope that every single person in this room will come back next Wednesday and give me an opportunity to explain what tongues is in the context of what the Apostle Paul said. But tonight, what I want you to do, I want you to close your eyes and I'm going to pray for you. Father, Lord, we, I, I opened up the scriptures to what I believe you wanted us to talk about tonight. And Father, I know that everything I said, I was fighting against preconceived ideas and notions that were already in all of our heads from what people have taught us over the years, God. But Lord Jesus, I want you to help us clear our minds out so that we can hear your word in its purest form and take it for what it says and not from what somebody else told us it says, Lord. I pray, Holy Spirit, that God, you would give us a conviction to know what the truth is on this matter. And Father, I ask, Lord, that you would give us the grace to understand this. I pray that you would, you would birth a, a curiosity and a hunger for people to understand this the way it's supposed to be understood, God, and not stay away from it, Lord. We pray for your help in this matter. We pray that you would continue to open our eyes. And God, I ask you that you would take those scriptures that we use tonight, God, and that you would use them to minister to each and every person's heart tonight, Lord. We thank you for what you have started, and we ask you, God, to give us grace until our next appointed time related to this lesson, Father. We love you. We thank you. We thank you for saving us, Jesus. We thank you that you're our Messiah. You're our King. You're our Savior. We love you. And we thank you for all the blessings and the things that you have given us. And how you sacrificed your own life to give us life, Lord. We love you. We thank you. We praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name. And I pray that you help each and every person, Lord, get back to their homes safely tonight until our next appointed time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.